Ah, it's great to be back in Turkey. You probably know this country for its great sites like Cappadocia and Istanbul. But I know it as the other Holy Land, a place rich in Christian history. It was here that John wrote to the churches of Revelation. Nearly a third of the New Testament was written from here or to here. It's a place where theologians hammered out orthodoxy over the centuries and wrote great documents like the Nicene Creed, which many churches say week in and week out. But before we get into that rich Christian history, we need to spend a day in Turkey's most exciting city, Istanbul. I'm on a study tour with 13 students from Ridley College and today is our first full day together in Istanbul. I want the students to get over their jet lag, to get to know each other, but most of all, to get to know this wonderful, wonderful city. And the best way to get to know its places, its people, its sights and smells is through its food. So we're going to visit the back streets, tasting all sorts of food, the usual, the unusual, on the tourist trail and off the tourist trail. Let's go Istanbul. We're here during the Ramadan holiday where it seems like all of Istanbul has come in for shopping and eating. And why not? This has one of the most exciting and diverse shopping and eating scenes of any city I've ever visited. As we go through the spice market, we're walking through an 800 year old building, past all kinds of wonderful spices and nuts and sweets. But it's a little bit on the crowded side but fortunately, I know a place which has got a bit more space and where the prices are cheaper just around the corner. You can smell this shop 100 metres before you can see it. In Turkey, spices are a part of life and culture and sweets are just the thing to celebrate the end of Ramadan with. Oh my goodness. Well, the students are like kids in a candy store, but with nothing here written in English, no one's quite sure what they're trying and what they're buying. Yeah, so we're at a spice shop and um, there's spices all around the walls. There's capsicum paste, there's nuts and stuff, but right here you've just got every Turkish sweet and it looks amazing. And we've tasted some, the guy gave us some to try and it was just phenomenal. So. Um, he does that, I think, so that we then realise how good it is and buy boatloads of it. So we're um, trying to decide how how much to get, but it's all like it's like ten dollars a kilo, and so you just buy a couple of these, and it ends up being like two dollars. So um, yeah, I'm, I don't know what to do. Don't know, don't know what to choose. Istanbul is full of surprises, and not just. Surprises like sweets and spices, but ancient surprises as well. You can walk around a corner and find yourself face to face with something that is seriously old, like this Roman aqueduct. The aqueduct, so that's called the Aqueduct of Valens, named after Emperor Valens, who built it in the 4th century. So it's seriously old. He was Constantine's great grandnephew. And one of the issues with this city, it's got everything going for it, everything except for water. The nearest water is, is many kilometres outside of the city. And so the Romans, as you know, were engineering geniuses, their roads, the terracing of buildings, but also their aqueducts. And so this is one of the best examples anywhere of a Roman aqueduct. This section runs for 960 metres the water flows from left to right, and it's, it's part of a system of aqueducts that was over 200 kilometres long. The, one of the, the most ingenious parts of the, of the um, aqueducts is not simply that you could build a structure that big and that long, but that you could get the fall right so that the water was continually moving but not going too fast. And of course, if you lose your fall too quickly, you run out of fall. So, absolutely genius system. In fact, water is very important to the city of Istanbul. It's the stretch of water known as the Bosphorus Strait that divides the European from the Asian side. We have the chance to get on a ferry to take us to our next food destination, to take the weight off our feet and look at some of the great sights that can be viewed from the water.
we pass the Rumeli fortress built by the Ottomans as they sought to block the Bosphorus Strait and prevent supplies from reinforcing the city before they invaded it. Built in just 89 days, it's an incredible testament to Ottoman ingenuity and engineering. Well, back at the ferry terminal is this iconic Istanbul establishment selling balak ekmek or fish and bread. Every day thousands of fish are cooked on this barbecue on the water and served on a bread roll with lettuce and topped with lemon juice. Some of the students are loving the opportunity to taste this unique Istanbul cuisine. But fish is not everyone's cup of tea, especially when it's oily like this. But if they think that fish is oily, wait till they try an Islak burger, a wet burger. This Istanbul institution is found in the new district. It's made of, well, burger meat and bread. But what makes it truly unique is that the bread is heated up at the bottom of the drip tray. And what's dripping into it? Fat. Hence, it's a wet burger. Apparently, it's the ultimate hangover cuisine. You might be wondering why an Islamic country would have a hangover cuisine like the wet burger. But that tells us a lot about Turkey and Istanbul. Because while it's 95% Islamic, and while it's becoming more and more Islamic, it has a strong secular thread. Ever since Mustafa Ataturk founded the country on secular principles, trying to westernize and modernize the place, things like alcohol have become a regular part of Turkish life, particularly in the big cities like this one. Ah, video 20 lira. You'll see them making the cockerech on rotisseries over charcoal. What, what is in those rotisseries, you'll see it's got something wound around the outside. What it is, it's lung, heart, liver, with washed out sheep's intestines wrapped around it. Then they slice it off, put it on here with chilli and onion and chop it up and serve it on a bread roll. Yours for 18 lira. Who's going to give it a go? The cockerich. I'll give it a go, but I want the mussels too. Mm. What's in it? Spices. Yeah. Spices and herbs mm. and a little bit of meat. <laughs> it's been a great day making friends, learning some cultural lessons, and giving a few cultural lessons of our own. So the jury's out and not everybody loves every type of Turkish street food, but there is one type of Turkish food that everybody loves. Who is ready for baklava? Yeah. 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 I've chosen this place because it was recommended to me by a restaurant here down the road and it's Gazi and Tep baklava, which is a, the best baklava in the world, like I promised. There the guys are in a, a humidity control room hand rolling sheets of pastry until you can read a newspaper through it. They, what they then do is they put, they've got eight minutes to roll them before it dries out. They then put in another room three on and then they use sheep milk butter that has been milked between January and June. I kid you not. And then another three layers. They build up 40 layers of, of pastry. They've got the round dishes, they put the pistachios, and you see the guy sorting the pistachio nuts, and it's like, no good, no good, good, no good, no good, good. Right? So it's, it's that good, it's that done that well. Then they um, put it into the wood-fired oven, which is, I can't remember the temperature, but it's oak wood because it doesn't put off a flavor, and they put, cook it in the wood-fired oven, and then they bring it out, and the master dude is in charge of the syrup and he then pours the syrup over it 
and they sprinkle it with um, pistachios at the end. Now, what I'm going to do is I'll buy a, uh, I'll buy one for each of us, okay? And then we're going to take it around the corner to the water and eat it overlooking the Golden Horn. So it'll be a fitting in for our day. Yeah, the way it works on your palate. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, gotta, I, gotta get I think Tim was right. He has oversold a few things, but this is possibly the world's best brick lava. Man, that was um, that was amazing. I just escaped to heaven. I think I was raptured momentarily, all the way up to the seventh floor. Um, man, look at that. That's what a beautiful mess that is. That's, um, that's a couple of pieces left. If these guys don't finish it, I'm gonna have more. That was amazing. The day was really good. My feet are sore because we've been busy. Uh, we've been walking around, but it's been great. It's been full of a lot of stuff, um, but it's been good fun. I had a great time, thank you. Yeah. It's uh, been interesting, um, just modern Istanbul and the combination of quite conservative Islam and contemporary modern secular Islam, um, a country that's still in transition, so fascinating. Yeah. Today was really good. It was amazing. So blessed to be in such a strange country, to be honest, and everything is new and exciting. And um, we're with a great bunch of people, we're well looked after. We get to sample a whole lot of food that we never tasted before. So yeah, what could, else can you ask for? It's great. Go Ridley. Yeah, go Ridley. <laughs> I love Turkey and I love the Turkish people. I'm reminded that we're called to make disciples of all nations, including this one. My prayer is that Ridley students will have a global vision and confidence to leave their comfort zone and cross to other cultures like this one. For many of these guys, today was the first day outside their own country. It was a big step for them into another very different culture. I hope that it's given them a bigger vision for the world, a bigger vision for the gospel, a bigger vision for God's kingdom.